Hey everybody, welcome to Matt Men, your source for all things professional wrestling. I'm Andrew Zarian, and I'm joined by the doppelganger himself. The, Who's your doppelganger? I'm the Doppler ganger. You're the Doppler ganger. So whenever you hear me walk by, you just yeah. hear Wah. Yeah. Also, happy MDK, meatballs, ding dongs, and Klondike bars. Yeah, perfect. <laughs> can we uh can we get a uh F Joe Pearl? Before we start, you want to go to war with him? I don't. I, listen, I, I truly do like Joe Pearl a lot. But listen, man, if you come after us in Vegas, you're going to get got. You're going to get got. Uh, guys, there's so much happening in professional wrestling the last couple of weeks. My God, you know, I got so much crap for saying, uh, for tweeting out that this really feels like 97. You know, and, and the way that I maybe I should have been a little mm. clearer because my, my point was. I, I've never seen so much buzz happening about yeah. pro wrestling, like that era. You know, like I grew up in the forum times. I, I think a lot of our viewers did too, right? If you're an F4W uh, subscriber, if you're a Wrestling Observer subscriber, you kind of lived through that and you saw the chaoticness of people going back and forth and the arguing and all this. It's a lot of excitement. I mean, it, it is, you know, someone in the Twitch chat said it's the Wild West. It definitely is right now. Um, you know, 2015. 2014 on was hot for pro wrestling. Yeah. And then it fizzled out a little bit. You know, uh, everybody got gobbled up. The Indies kind of mm -hmm. declined a little bit. Obviously, the pandemic put a halt to everything. So and right now we're, we're back into this and it's super exciting yeah. to be part of this for sure. Uh, very exciting stuff. Rich, you got some announcements before we get into the nitty gritty. You want to go into it? Ooh, should I do the big announcement? Yeah, let's do it. All right, guys. Listen, this is pretty cool for us. It's pretty cool for you guys. We're going to have a lot of fun next week. We're going to be in Vegas for SummerSlam week. And not only that, but we are going to be doing uh, live show, perhaps shows, from the Sapphire Pool. And I'm going to let you do it. Okay. Because I want to hear you Our do special it. guest. Our special guest. We got two for you. None other than... Mr. Rob Van Dam. Hell on yeah. with us. Live from the Sapphire Pool, Rob Van Dam and Katie Forbes will be uh, hosting... What do you think yeah. it is? I'm really enjoying it, man. I got a lot of questions for Rob Van Dam. I got a lot of questions for Katie. Uh, they're going to steal the show, definitely. You know, like, I think just it's a combustible element. Both of us yeah. in a pool away from <laughs> New York. Oh, no, we're doing while. it in the pool, right? All wires and everything. We're doing it in the pool. Yeah. You said something about bringing uh, toasters to throw into the pool <laughs> yeah. while we're in it. You said something about a pact, right? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, you know, I, I yeah, we're, we just have a pack here. We're just going to throw the toasters in, hold hands, and jump in a pool. No, this is going to be awesome. We're doing it live from the Sapphire Day Club, the Sapphire Pool in Las Vegas. Our good friends over at Sapphire in Las Vegas. Mm. Obviously, good friends of us, of ours here, Sapphire New York. So they've always been great to us, and we're going to be doing some really cool stuff with them. Uh, so it, it's a lot of fun. Uh, Vegas is going to be awesome, man. SummerSlam is going to be great. I'm excited to be out there. We're also going to be at All Out mm -hmm. uh, with the F4W crew doing everything that they're going to be up to over there. Uh, we're going to be doing some special shows. And we're, we will be live at the Arthur Ashe Stadium. Uh, Rich and I and also a whole bunch of us, actually, are going to do a meetup prior to that. Oh, uh, I'll, have, I'll have locations and everything when that's happening. And also, uh, are we going to the MSG show? Uh, I'd like to go to the NXT uh, let's go show. Then. Let's do it. Yeah. I'll figure it out. That'd be fun. So a lot going on in pro wrestling. Rich, where do you want to begin here? Uh, let's start. Uh, we, we're we working on so much stuff right now. Uh, do you want to do wrestling news or do you want to do the Matt Men and the other stuff with the Patreon? And oh, go that? into the Patreon stuff. So uh, we're redoing our Patreon. We're going to be redoing our Patreon tiers. We're hoping to launch that within the next week or so. Um, guys, if you're uh, if you want to become a member of our Patreon, it's patreon.com slash Matt Men podcast. Um, we've been doing it for years and we appreciate you guys like subscribing and donating and all that stuff and keeping us afloat. Um, but that being said, we are going to redo that. We have a lot of merch that is available now, which is pretty awesome. Um, Jonathan, if you could link that into the chats, that'd be fantastic. Uh, I'm really digging these t-shirts. I am man. too, man. Very, very cool. He did a tremendous job on these and also MG Geek has been doing an unbelievable job at, uh, producing the show and doing all the notes and the patreon and everything else so this has been a fun fun uh couple months here it has been it's been yeah. a wild ride since january to be yeah, honest unbelievable. it's you really know? unbelievable think about this we were doing remotes in january and yeah. remote podcasts every week until we got picked up by f4w, F4W. yeah which is again thanks guys that's uh that's really cool you got you put our weird heads in front of a lot of people's yeah, man. faces um, been awesome talk to me about nxt Oh, man, a lot. So we did a show on Saturday. Uh, I was traveling. That's why I'm, I'm a, obnoxiously tan right now. We were, I was in Jamaica <laughs> on vacation with my wife. So Listen, brother, you said it, not me. <laughs> uh, 
so a lot's going on, man. Uh, NXT follow-up to the cuts, obviously. The story is that there's a new direction to NXT. A lot of speculation of who's in charge of NXT. Mm -hmm. Uh, I guess we'll start off with a lot of the rumors regarding Triple H. Triple H is in charge of NXT, right? We we know that it's Hunter and it's Shawn Michaels. Mm -hmm. They're running the show over there. Um, I I found it interesting. That people are like, well, he should leave. I'm like, <laughs> what? and do what? Yeah, exactly. He's running. I mean, like he's a major player. He's a major corporate player in this multi billion dollar company. Where is he going to go and what is he going to do? And to be honest, NXT, NXT is developmental. That That's the approach that they're taking, right? But it, it was always supposed to be some kind of developmental brand until they moved to USA and then they, they rolled out the announcement. Well, no, of... it changed in 2016. Okay. The Nakamura stuff was, you know, when, when, they, when they got Balor and they got Kevin mm -hmm. Owens and they got Generico and then they got Nakamura, they picked up Bobby Roode, they picked up all these guys, Adam Cole, mm -hmm. you know, they essentially raided Ring of Honor. Right. This, you know, they they were a, a measure towards Ring of Honor more than anything else. That was their competition. And you know what? NXT did a tremendous mm. job for, uh, from the beginning on. But really, your options were limited when it came to mainstream national pro wrestling. Yeah. You know, you, obviously, you could find it if you want. But this was really well-produced, highly produced content at the time, 2014, 2013, you know, we, that we weren't getting. And it was an alternative to... Uh, not so great WWE wrestling that was happening, you know, right before they started popping. So I think for a lot of us, it was really cool to see these guys that we follow on the indies getting some sort of national exposure with oh, yeah. hopes that they're going to be, you know, they're going to be big stars. I, I think, to be honest, they became a third. They became a third territory. They really did. But I mean, like, do you think do you think that whole cool factor of NXT got mired in the stigma of like expanding to two hours getting on usa and now with that whole weirdo backstage like no more midgets you gotta Line. be tall i know you I know? know like that kind of thing because that's again from our perspective we're wrestling fans we've been fans our entire lives you hear all this backstage yeah. stuff about vince just loving muscle guys like, big dudes you know i first of all i think it's such like a, a dated you know, way to describe the smaller guys. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, first of all, having some issues with your audio, Jesus. Um, uh, like, by the way, that that what what Dave reported is one hundred percent accurate. That was what was said. Now it wasn't an official memo. Somebody uh, people started saying that oh, it was an official memo. It wasn't an official memo. Yeah, it, it's the narrative, and you you know who has that narrative in that company. They don't want smaller guys. They want big giant monsters. They want cartoon characters. More than anything else. And that's how it's always been. That's always yeah. been their direction. You know, it was not a. It wasn't that Vince, you know, changed his mind. Just Vince was he took it's a hands off approach with to hiring these guys. Yeah. You know, the the fact that you got a guy like Ricochet on that roster that does nothing. I mean, he's doing he's starting. He's starting to do something I mean, now. What, again? Though? I mean, what? What is he going to do? How far is it going to go? You know, like. Oh, Ricochet is a tough nut to crack, right? Because they know if they, well, you know what? If they lose Ricochet, he'll go anywhere, right? I mean, where he could go. Yeah, you could go anywhere. I mean, AEW would be mm -hmm. a great option for him. But, you know, we, we also have to be careful who goes where and who does what at this point, right? And, and we yes. should break that down today yes. a little bit. Because as soon as someone gets released from WWE, automatically people are like, well, he should go to AEW. Well, no, maybe he shouldn't go to AEW. Maybe he should figure out something else that's going to highlight him a little bit better. Exactly. Um, Tyler Breeze, I think he said that this week too, um, basically going, well, if I show up in AEW now when Punk and Daniel Bryan might end up being there, I'm not going to make much of an impact. Sure. You know? and, and he's, listen, man, that's a, that's the reality. And he's a tremendous talent, yeah. but that's the reality of it more than anything else. So um, let me see where we were. Sorry, guys. Uh, so with NXT, is there a new direction like, all of a sudden, everybody's going to be off TV and you're going to have these giants on TV. No, but it's going to be a little bit of a change where, you know what, that guy, the 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 the, the wrestler, right? What's his name? Um, Mickey Rourke? No, 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 not, not Mickey Rourke. <laughs> yeah. Mickey Rourke, the guy with the face. Mm. Uh, the one that just won gold at the Olympics. Yes, okay. Big dude. I mean, His name is passing my mind, sorry. But, I mean, that's the type of guy mm. they would want, right? That's yeah. the type of guy. Bianca Belair, great example. Type oh, yeah. of person that they want. Pure athlete, tremendous athlete. Homegrown. Homegrown. And, and that's the approach that they've always wanted. Always wanted. Well, 
I, I'll give you another good example of like a homegrown Gable guy. Gable Stevenson. I'm so sorry. There Gable Stevenson. Yeah, yeah, tremendous talent. Uh, I'll give you another a great example of a homegrown guy that I feel like people poo poo on, but that's the point. Baron Corbin. Okay. I have I have a tweet that's going out today because I typed it up yesterday and I forgot to press go. Oh, really? So I, I'll 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 kind of summarize it here. So I was talking to one of the guys that I talk to regularly over mm -hmm. there, right? Uh, the one that told me m months ago that Baron Corbin is like one of the most beloved people in the company. Yeah. Uh, and he wrote, he goes, "You see what I mean now?" Mm -hmm. I said, "Yeah, man." I go, "Listen, I've always I've always got it. I got yeah. what you guys were doing." He's like, "This is why." We, everybody likes him. This is the Baron Corbin that we all know. Mm -hmm. And now he's finally able to be comfortable on the air and do do bits know, and stuff. Bits and and like stuff. All that. I, I mean, really, you got to look at this. My God, what a what a likable guy, even though he's still a heel. Yeah. You know, yeah, even yeah. though he's still a heel, you still like it because you're like, this is so out of left field for <laughs> the crazy. character. It's great. I mean, he was he was he was the general manager of Raw at one point. Mm -hmm. Right. He was was it yeah it was raw, was it raw? It's raw. Uh, he was a general manager. He was a biker. I think people forget that his gimmick was going to be like biker taker, and I think Eddie's daughter was going to be the manager. Okay. Uh, I, year, and NXT. I mean, I remember the vignettes where he's on the bike and he's there, and I'm like, dude, you know what? This is a cool gimmick. Yeah. And he did the twenty count. Mm -hmm. That got over, and uh, then it just went downhill. Well, I mean. He, when he showed up on NXT, we were so high on him, and we're still high on the guy, but he's a great example of a homegrown talent. Golden Gloves boxer, um, I, I think he played for the Kansas City Chiefs yeah. for a couple of seasons. You yeah. know? When they signed him, he was a massive, massive person. He looked like Festus, yeah. right? Slimmed him down, got the whole deal. He was over with, that, with the finisher in NXT because nobody kicks out of it, yeah. you know? And then going to Raw, and now like poor man Corbin is—it's hysterical, you know. It is a—it's a testament to the guy, but again, sure. homegrown dude, right? Roman, homegrown dude for the most part. I mean, no, no, Roman is homegrown, hundred percent. He's homegrown. Do you count him homegrown, even though his dad, his dad's a wild Samoan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Home. I mean, it's like it's like The Rock, right? The Rock was homegrown. What if they were the wacky Samoans? The wacky Samoans. <laughs> I love that gimmick. <laughs> Just like the Bushwhackers. Oh my god. Just Samoan. Love it. Um. I gotta figure out. I'm hearing phasing. I'm losing okay. my mind here. Sorry. <laughs> it's the Doppler. I told you. I'm the, the Doppler The doppelganger. So, uh, yeah, they're going for more home homegrown stuff. But you know what? This is not an. This is not that terrible. Mm -hmm. You know, they. they w I I don't anticipate this being like. Well, it's over for NXT. I really don't. By the way, the ratings were tremendous this week because a lot of people were questioning what the hell's going on. By the way, Johnny Gargano. Did you see the announcement? Congrats to Jenny Gargano and Candice LeRae. Yeah. Uh, they are expecting their first child. So now it kind of makes sense why Tegan's program changed, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Now that kind of makes sense for everybody. How she debuted, uh, they were hinting at a program with Candice, and then it just went nowhere, and she went to the main roster. Can I take a minute here? Yeah. Um, guys, if you're tuning in on the Twitch, there was a little bit of a snafu. We are not trying to gotcha. This is not the AEW Dynamite, Dynamite full, full show review with Denise <laughs> Salcedo. This is Matt Men, the podcast with Andrew and Rich. Um, I feel like a lot of guys in the chat room are like, what the hell is happening right now? Well, you know, here's the problem. I forgot the password to the F4W account, <laughs> so I can't log in to change the name. I, ha I was just streaming, so there you go. Also, let me tell you, you know what, guys? Here's a little industry secret, yeah. a, little, a little dish for I you. I am Denise. Well, I was going to say, when we high-five each other super hard, we turn into Denise. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> One just... <laughs> Fuse into one. Uh, I asked her if uh, Nick Gage bled all over her at at, uh, at that show at oh GCW. <laughs> Did you see the photo of them? I'm like, what a, what an odd couple in that photo. <laughs> Love it. Uh, so there's a lot going on. Uh, Tim Anger, twenty bucks. Thank you very much, my friend. And also Matt in four ninety nine, another five dollars. Foda boda. Uh, have fun in Vegas. And waiting to see what's planned for Chicago and Queens. Thoughts on the new Star Show heels with CM Punk? I'm not sold on that. I, ha I haven't watched it. I got to see it. The uh, the trailer. Oh, the trailer. I haven't. I saw the first trailer. <laughs> I didn't see the new trailer. Yeah, I'm gonna watch it. I'm not 100 percent sold on it. Yeah. Listen, I like it when people have work, and yeah. it's a good cast. Yeah. Uh, some more news here. The networks and what their thoughts are. I put out a tweet. I spoke to somebody at the network. Mm. You know, he here's the thing, right? A and I'll break this down a little bit. You have to remember that these guys are not wrestling fans, right? Some of them are, but their knowledge of wrestling is far less than 
this the viewership here because we are we are dedicated pro wrestling fans. These are executives that have a wrestling channel, mm. uh, wrestling program on their channel. Yeah. Uh, the concern is is more perception mm. than anything else. Uh, when I could tell you that when AEW and NXT went head to head, it was really interesting how the USA side really believed that AEW was a rinky dink operation. They mm. thought it was like going to be a joke. Yeah. And I have seen, I'm going to tell you, I have seen or heard conversations amongst them. Mm-hmm. And it's like, oh, yeah, it's a joke. We're going to be, there's no way they'll do viewership. What are they going to get? 200,000 viewers, 300,000. Like that's, that was a conversation coming from a lot of these guys. Right, right, right. And, you know, when they hit that million on that first show, it was like, oh, crap. Uh-huh. And it really sucked the wind out of them. Yeah. Uh, and I'm, and a lot of these guys were like the sales team and the marketing team and things like that. So, uh, you know, there was always a little bit of concern. But now going to Tuesdays, I think they anticipated they would do a lot better. Mm-hmm. And they, they are doing better for sure. I think Tuesdays is a way better night for them. But the perception says a lot. Oh, yeah. The perception of, OK, WWE's releasing top ca- characters like Braun, mm-hmm. top, uh, top people like Braun and, and Bray and everybody else that they release. Now they're also gutting the developmental what does that say to someone that doesn't really understand the product yeah i mean i you know it i think this kind of stuff it trolls the it trolls the fans a lot yeah you know because they think there's some kind of big conspiracy you know and i think for the past couple of weeks like a lot of what we've seen on the internet is why 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 yeah. You know, without like people kind of like, I guess, understanding, you know, like you do marketing yeah. for, for a large company and you get the money side of it. Sure. Yeah. And, and that, that's generally when we cover, when I cover WWE side yeah. of business, I, I, I don't sit here and I criticize. I mean, listen, we, we, we criticize their booking for sure. Mm. Right. But I, I, my conversations are more on mar- on the business end of things. Right. 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 You know, and I'm fast. I'm interested in that stuff because. That really is the story. Mm-hmm. The story is the business end. That dictates everything that this company does. Publicly traded company, investors, network partners, content partners, merchandise partners. These things all come into play when they're making a decision. It is not a coincidence that they had an ambulance match and yeah. immediately they were selling the toys from Mattel. Oh, it's my not, God. Yeah. You know, everybody's like, well, WWE did a cage match, a, a Shark Tank match with uh, Paul Ellering. Remember that? Was that with Enzo? Or like you're talking like who did they put in the shark cage? I know they did one with Enzo with the thing suspended. Yeah, okay, above they, the crowd. yeah, yeah, yeah. They did that, and they also did it in NXT. And they also did the Jericho uh, Ambrose Asylum playset like immediately. Also. Immediately, so these you know a Shark Tank, uh, 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 the the Shark Cage is not a WWE thing that you ever see. But you know what? You want to sell some more merch, and you want to have oh, a yeah. third a, a, a add on to your Mattel set. This is it. Oh, absolutely. So these things come into play here. Let me ask you something, because yeah. I don't. I'm not a money guy. I'm not a numbers guy. I can hardly read, listen, and listen. I can hardly. I, I know things are rough here. here I can is hardly one. count to ten. Here is a a a Chinese lira. Thanks, boss. All right, there you go. Thanks, boss. I'll put it and, in my brush. And I'll give you a James Worthy NBA hoops card from yeah. 1990. Here you go. 90 fork. Um, and I so, also have an expired Seinfeld this, Metro card. Why is, this, why is this stuff here? <laughs> <laughs> like, where are you digging this out of? By the way, you want to see the most like, New York like thing? a Mary Poppins fanny pack where you're <laughs> yeah, just like pulling weird shit out of? Yeah, I got some really weird stuff. All yeah, right. This is the most New York thing I own. Oh, we got that Seinfeld Metro. It's a Seinfeld Metro card. Yeah, wow. and there's Junior Mints on the back. Wow. Uh, okay, I have, a, I have a question for yeah. you. Not me, not, not understanding like a lot of this stuff and the contracts and the numbers and all that, right? I'll give you an example. Bray Wyatt, right? If they're still selling Bray Wyatt shirts at arenas and selling them out, does he get a cut of that, or is that all going to the company? Say that again. I'm so sorry. Oh my God, who are you talking to now? Uh, I'm telling people to send <laughs> the questions to Jonathan. Um, yeah. So if Bray Wyatt. Yeah. Uh, you got? Do I have your attention? Yes. It, so he if, shaved his face. I saw that. He looks uh, really weird. He looks like the commission. So <laughs> if. If, since he's gone, WWE is selling Bray Wyatt merchandise, right? Yeah. They're still selling shirts. Does he still get a cut of that? Uh, yes, he would. Okay. Yeah, because because the merchandise deal is separate from what I remember. Okay, so arguably, and like I know they're selling a new Braun Strowman shirt, right? So arguably, well, no, no, that was a mistake. I really? think that was a mistake, okay. yeah. So arguably, their loss by 
their gain by not paying him what they're paying him do you think it's offset by the merch that they're that they're selling no the merch thing expires at a dip i think they have like let's say you get released mm -hmm. right they have like 90 days to continue selling your merch okay that you still get money from okay like that's what happened with brock lesnar remember when brock lesnar he has his merch still available and then they ran a sale mm -hmm. and then it got taken off so the merch deal expires X amount of, you know, after your release, whatever it is. Yeah. Because they need to they need to liquidate the inventory more than anything else. Uh, correction on the Paul Ellering thing. Paul, er Paul Ellering was in a shark cage for AOP, AOP. versus TM61. Yeah, there you go. That's the one. Okay, cool. Yeah. I knew I knew he was in a shark cage, which I f and they did it like twice. And I was like, that's so weird that they do it in a shark cage match. Um, so listen, th the networks are the networks. Uh, they they're not there's no like oh my god we got to cancel this right there's mm. nothing like that i saw some people reporting that nxc's uh in fear of cancellation that is not the case they just blew the ratings through the water seven hundred and fifty thousand, i believe yeah. right so that is great numbers for that product uh it, it, like if you think about who's on that roster now mm. and how and by the way this developmental thing has been going on for a while with them yeah look at all the look at all the names on there that from a year and a half ago to today, mm -hmm. all different guys. Uh, it's a very yeah. different roster, except for you know Champa and Gargano. You, mm -hmm. I mean, they have they have, they're there, but they're not the main focus. Mm -hmm. The main focus is something very different. So, a lot of interesting stuff. You want to talk? Let's go into uh, all out news. So it looks like the all out main event is Christian Cage versus Kenny Omega. I personally think that's a red herring. <sighs> okay, tell me why. Uh, I think this is this match upcoming on Rampage on Friday is yeah. going to be it for them for now. Okay, I we were talking about this mm. a while ago. Actually, I think it was last week you asked me. You said, "How should the titles be lost?" Right? Mm. Isn't he wrestling Andrade next weekend or this weekend? This weekend he's wrestling Andrade, right? Uh, for the CMLL, CMLL thing. I'm sorry, not CMLL. I'm sorry, uh, AAA. AAA? Yeah. yeah, I'm. <sighs> Do you think it's time for him to start losing these belts? I, I think he should drop that impact title. Okay. I think that would be a, that would be interesting to get it off of him now. Mm -hmm. But maybe the story is the demise of Kenny, you know? Which makes you kind of... I feel like this whole belt collector thing needs to go further. Well, everything maybe changed. they can't. No, no, no. You know? The plan changed. Okay. This, was, this, this wasn't the trajectory. Okay. Um, things moved really rapidly with this, with everything that's going on mm -hmm. right now. And they, you know, is it time for Hangman to beat Kenny? I don't know now. You know, I, I, I Kenny, like a lot of people, are like, well, this, this is really bad for Hangman. No, it's not. It's not no. because they're working. They're doing something here with Hangman. Don't, yeah. don't. Uh, I don't, I don't want to say what I've heard because uh -huh. I have no way of knowing it's true or not. But they have plans for him. He's one of the most over guys in the company. Oh God, my God! Like right? that pop that he gets is remarkable. And yeah. You know, that's all organic. That's Absolutely. an organic build for the guys. So which is nuts, man. Like that, like I think um I think people a lot of people got in on the ground floor with Hangman and they're they're there by his side. The other thing and is listen, you were there from the beginning and I didn't see what you saw for a long time. You're like you're like this kid is gonna be a world champion and then guy, all of a sudden he blew up. Um I do think this is, again, this is my fanboy thing. I do think he's gonna be the only guy to kick out of the one wing at Angel. You, and whenever should, I say yeah. that, people go nuts. Because like, <laughs> because who I know because somebody else kicked out of it once uh, because uh, Abushi did it like nine years ago in DDT yeah um so this I as much as I want the want the main event of All Out to be Hangman uh, Kenny I don't know again personally would you rather see it at one of their other big pay per views uh, I don't know man I, hmm. I mean it has to be at a big pay per view. But is he the guy that beats him? Should he be the guy? I mean, now you got mm. a whole different story here. You got CM Punk coming in mm. next week, which we got to talk about again because it is it is mm. unbelievable that we are having this conversation seven years from now when people were screaming that he will never wrestle again. Mm. And I just want to say something. Uh, Rich, uh. <laughs> do you see behind me what I've had up behind me? Oh, yeah. Okay. That's been there for a reason. Mm. I just, I want you guys... To look back, if you kind of want to dive into this, look back when I put that up. Yeah, that and deep dive Matt Men. Deep dive Matt Men. I've had that up there for a little bit of time. I've also swapped things out behind mm -hmm. me a bunch of times. So uh, I, I think it's fascinating to talk about this.
that this is the moment that we're in. Yeah. Also, uh, Nick Nick Nikolai Kreese in the chat brought up a good point. Remember, Full Gear is the Hangman pay per view. Is it really? Remember, because they did that whole bit of him just showing up in Full Gear. Is that is that what it was? Yeah. I don't remember that. Full Gear. There was a BT a whole BT, a whole BT thing BT for like thing? months. Interesting. Listen, I I you know we're we're in a. I think I think they AEW had to rethink their 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 trajectory the next couple of months. It's the internet. It's the internet. I got a question for you. Yeah, now. Let's do it. All right. Would you? And again, like we, this is like a kind of like a, a news light show that we're doing. So we're gonna do a little fantasy booking here and, and Q and A stuff today. And Q and A stuff. Would you pop if instead of three separate debuts with AEW, let's say, yeah, Rotunda, Punk, same night, Danielson, Faction. No, I wouldn't want that. You wouldn't want that. No, no, no. Because I, if 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 Rotunda's going AEW, uh -huh. it has to be the leader of the Dark Order, and he okay. should feud with Hangman. Okay, he should be Hangman's like first like monster feud mm -hmm. like that. I, I mean, it's so organically told, right? Because okay. you had the Brody Lee connection, you got the Eric Rowan connection, you have Bray as this mm -hmm. cult leader that he was. He he razzle dazzled everybody before. <laughs> he really did razzle dazzle uh, everybody. You know. Danielson is going to be there, so he mm -hmm. could razzle dazzle him a little bit. You have a yeah. lot that you could do. Actually, I, I I mean, out of all the people to go over, I think for Bray mm -hmm. to go over, like it, there's a, there's so much talk. Like, does Braun go over? Like, can you imagine if Rowan, Braun, and him show up yeah. in the Dark Order? <laughs> I know it, it, it's <laughs> just I, I'm not saying that's what I would want. I'm yeah. not saying that that's the proper direction. But man, if there was ever an opportunity to go to another company yeah, yeah. where you would fit in organically. Uh, you would, I mean, that would be it. I know Dark Order is more of a comedy thing now, but you could turn that around and he could pick up the incompetent lackeys, you know, like, yeah, yeah. But you like know Rodia. what? Like, I think, um, I think Dark Order now is where they always, they were, they always wanted them to be positioned, you know? Yeah. And I'm not saying, I'm not saying I want to see Braun in AW, which I don't, I don't want to yeah, see Braun yeah. because I think he would be, uh, out of place. Yeah. I think, you know what? Like not everybody has to go to Ryback. Can you imagine him? <laughs> No thanks. I was never a fan. Of, I'm nothing against the guy. I was never a Ryback never, guy. Never a big fan. Uh, there's a there's few people on my list where I'm like, we never got that Ryback Goldberg match. Never got that. Ryback Unfortunately, Goldberg I'm match. so upset over that. You know that, Rich. Every day I would I would get up and curse the universe that we never got to see Ryback and Goldberg in the match together. He's the real Sunberg. He is the real Sunberg. And guys, listen, if you're just tuning in for the first time, we get a little silly over here, so don't take what we say seriously. No, take, for, take some I mean, of the like, stuff. Take it very take, seriously. Take some of the stuff we say seriously, <laughs> but like, you know, a lot of the bullshit that comes guys, out of our mouth. Guys, here's the real. Like, I've been making this you know, whole thing up this entire time. Like when we say we slap five and we're Denise and we turn Denise, that's real. That's all <laughs> real. When, when I said CM Punk's going to debut, uh, you know, when, when we make, do those breaking news stories, those are all fake. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Imagine if that gets picked up today. I, you know Andrew's what? Andrew admits all wrestling news You know is what? Fake. I, want, I, want, I want the title of the story to be Andrew Zarian admits that all of his stories are fake. However, what is real is that when Rich and him high five, they turn into Denise Salcedo. <laughs> Supernatural. If you, you know what? If we do like the 90s chest bump, we become Dave Meltzer. You know? Oh my God. That's how it works. You know, but he's nine feet tall. Nine feet tall. Uh, you know what? Um, I think I'm going to pitch something to you. Yeah, do it. I think we should be the first wrestling podcast that are hosted by two spooky guys. We got to change our gimmick. Oh, you want to become? Yeah, you want to become like really deranged spooky? Who guys? will be spooky guys? Yeah, because listen, there's there's the whole Creative landscape, wrestlers. whole landscape of wrestling podcasts. Why not make it fun? You know, let's be the spooky guys. Yeah. I'll shoot some lightning. You shoot some fire. Maybe nice. we'll miss it. Do face paint. Face paint. Oh, yeah, I'm into it. Yeah. We should do it. Come out, come out on a plank. Like we this. should do it. We maybe in Vegas. We'll just really we'll we'll make RVD decide that this was the worst decision he's ever made in his life. We'll <laughs> come out of the pool. Uh, full gears here in St. Louis. Okay, interesting. Uh, very interesting. So let's now go into some more news. Sorry, guys, I am really tired today. I uh, I stayed up late drinking bourbon. Yeah, you were out. I saw the pictures. Yeah, you were out all night. I was man. out with my uh, one of my attorneys, somebody else's attorney. Mm -hmm. By the way. Uh, check out my Andrew Cuomo action figure here. <laughs> you want to see what he says? Yeah, I want to see. What he hey, I'm not perverted. I'm Italian American. Look at this. Look at this guy. Look at this. I said that to someone and Look they believe me. Watch. They're like, "Why do you have an Andrew Cuomo action figure?" I'm mm -hmm. like, "That's Vince McMahon." <laughs> uh, Listen, tomato, tomato. Yeah, I was up late drinking. Sorry, guys. I was at Capitol Grill on uh, in the city. So uh, where else are we going here, Rich? Uh, do you want to quickly go through Raw? Oh, Christian, did we do Christian Cage, Kenny Omega? No, we did this. Okay, cool. yeah, we did this. We're yeah, good. yeah, let's We're go good. to Raw. You, you run down Raw. Uh, so real quick here, like Raw has been like elevated to like <laughs> like it's still not that great, you know. Um, 
Randy Orton returned. He's rocking like a sweet Anthony Kiedis mustache goatee situation, which was very distracting for me. Uh, Dude, what you know? Here's the thing. Like, first of all, that was a choice he made. Yes, to have that mustache. That was a choice. That was a choice. Do you think Vince was like, you know what? If you're coming back, kid, grow a mustache. I think one of the funniest bits ever mm-hmm. from The Simpsons is the Mr. Burns uh, baseball team bit. With Don Mattingly? With Don Mattingly, and he keeps telling him to shave mm-hmm. his sideburns. That's what I imagine it's like. <laughs> Didn't I tell you shave those sideburns? And Randy comes with like a shaved head. Everything is shaved, and he still tells him to shave his sideburns. Mm-hmm. He's got that uh, He's got that Ketis thing going on yeah. in his face, which which I think is great. Um, so uh, Randy Orton returned. You promo with Riddle and AJ Styles. Uh, you get... Uh, RK bro, probably at SummerSlam, right? Like the turn. What? Well, no, but weren't they? I mean, it, to me, that the end of the show meant that when he hit him with the RKO, I was like, oh, okay, they're back. Like this is them, yeah. like together. But a lot of people thought it's like the beginning of a feud. I, you know, like he, babyface Randy never lasts too long. No, and I hate babyface Randy. Yeah, it's so uncomfortable, right? It's like he, he doesn't know how to be a nice guy. <laughs> I bet he's a really nice guy. He right? probably is a sweetheart. But, I mean, he's just so compelling as a heel. Yeah. Uh, Man, he is the the prototype to a wrestler in a box for WWE, right? Oh, 100%. That guy, I mean, he's slithery. His skin is beautifully tan. Tall. Tall. Slithery. How tall do you think he really is? Seven foot eight. Yeah? Yeah. Because he's billed at 6'5", and Riddled is billed at 6'1". I think he's six four. But like, I he was always, I, Randy looks gigantic. Yeah, no, I think he's six four, six five. I think they they overbuild people. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like Russell Talk, he's six five. Yeah, you know, um, Drew McIntyre beats Baron Corbin. Baron Corbin yeah, is let's... begging him for a hundred thousand. So this was really funny. So uh-huh. I was like, first of all, I'm watching this, right? I'm like, Drew is such a dick to this poor man, right? Yeah, he's being such an asshole to him. He didn't want to fight him. He's beating him up, and then mm. he's like, listen, um. How much money do you need? And he's mocking him when he's saying it, though, right? He's like, how much mm. do you need to get yourself a nice warm bed and get yourself a warm meal yeah. and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, $100,000. And I'm like, holy moly. You know what? Sometimes these writers are mm. hysterical and they know exactly what they're doing. Right, right, right. I, I mean, it was just done so well. Uh, but I do need to talk about this goddamn Fakak the sword. The sword looks awesome. The sword sucks. I- I'm sorry. You don't like it with him, but the sword looks awesome. The sword is a cool sword. The image... See, that's the thing. I feel like that's a marketing thing where the toys and the image of this giant Scotsman holding this big sword is really cool. Listen, he looks gnarly holding it, but... You can't use that shit. I mean, dude, it's leading to a sword match, right? You think him and Jinder are going to have like a sword versus scimitar match or some shit? Something. I, I And this is... I'm putting this in the universe. I want Jinder with a sword, man. That'd be cool. You know, I, I could see it already. Jinder has his sword, mm-hmm. and he goes and he do a sword battle, and it just gets cut in half. And mm-hmm. Jinder does a whoa, 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 you know, flare, flare, uh, you know, chicken shit heel thing. I, I think it would mm-hmm. be, I, I think that's where they're gonna go with this because yeah. they're putting such emphasis on the sword, or they're gonna destroy the sword. Jinder's gonna take the sword and melt it down into like a necklace. You know, you know, it would be cool. Yeah. If they gave Drew the lightning from the sword, from the sword. Yeah. So if they somehow did an effect where he can, he could shoot the lightning out of the tip of the sword. Oh my and God. Scare don't, give them the, don't give them the idea. Why not, man? That's cool. Uh, That's cool shit. Listen, I like, I like it when Highlander gimmick. I, I do like it when wrestling gets really silly sometimes. And I think that's okay. You know, people bitch and moan about silliness now. You like the silly stuff. I do I like it. the silly stuff. I do. I like everything. But, you know, people bitch and moan about how silly WWE can be, whereas 30 years ago, you got stopped dead in your tracks by a giant dude who did this. Yeah. You know, there's nothing sillier than that. No, no, no. And then you're like, what? Oh, he's pointing at me. There's nothing sillier than being frightened by a guy pointing at you. So, uh, the sword, it's happening. I feel like it's going to something. Can we talk about the goddamn wink? Dude, that the was doll, the first time they did that, right? The doll, I think the... No, that doll's been winking at me for months. Oh. I've been seeing it wink for months. I don't mm. know if anybody else did. I, the doll winked. Alexa beat Dewdrop mm. with Eva Marie. Okay, that was that. And Bobby Lashley and MVP, that promo was fantastic. Yes. Lashley is made out of rocks, right? Oh, 100%. He's just rocks from, He's the, from the rock planet. From the rock planet. There's no, there's no question. This man is... Uh, uh, unbelievable you remember those those mass of the universe toys yeah, yeah. Where, like the dudes that they they rolled into like rocks and then that's... they like became <laughs> like men yeah that's bobby lashley yeah that's exactly what it is um 
Let's see what else we got here, Rich. We got NXT, NXT uh, from Tuesday night. I gotta say, like, I love NXT. A little bit of a lackluster show for me. I don't know. I feel like there was like some kind of weird weight in the air. Yeah, I, I, dude, watching it for me, I felt that too. I was like, yeah. okay, this is weird to watch with all the news happening. It wasn't a terrible show. Dakota Kai uh, defeated. Mm. Who did she defeat? Hold on, I gotta load this. Sorry, my notes froze. Oh boy, uh, sh- who Dakota Kai? Dakota yeah. Kai beats Saray. Okay, Dakota Kai beats Saray. Uh, Pete Dunn confronted Dragunov. Uh, what do you think of him? Ilya Dragunov? Yeah. I, Dragunov is f- fantastic. I think that I think they're more keen on him than we might think. Oh, yeah. I, I believe so. 100%. Yeah. Million Dollar Champion, LA Knight with Cameron Grimes defeated Andre Chase. Mm. Ted DiBiase showed up. Uh, Cameron Grimes gets another shot at the title at TakeOver. If he loses, DiBiase <laughs> is Knight's butler. Never going to happen. Oh, it's, I hope it happens. <laughs> I hope it happens. Uh, Gigi Dolan defeated uh, Amari Miller. Amari Miller. Uh, Adam Cole and Kyle O'Reilly face to face. What else do we have here, Rich? Odyssey Jones beat Trey Baxter in an NXT breakout tournament semifinal match. Uh, Boa defeated Drake Maverick, and Pete Dunne defeated Ilya Dragunov. Yeah, which was weird. I thought that yeah. was interesting. That prior to that match, he lost. So, you know, like, I do miss the hour version of NXT. Dude, I've, I've been saying this for a long time. Yeah. This two hour has been a detriment because, mm-hmm. first of all, it's difficult to write TV. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I think people don't realize it. And NXT, I, I have a theory on NXT, and I'm going to say it right now. Okay? Go ahead. And people are going to get upset. I don't think people that championed NXT actually watched every episode of NXT. Mm. I think most people watched the takeovers, and I think most people watched the you know some of the shows two of the four in the block that they would do Mm -hmm. i don't think a lot of people watched every week because if you watched nxt every week you would notice Mm -hmm. that two of the episodes are really good and two of them were eh right because they did those tapings over the course of like it was like well like every two weeks you recorded a A whole bunch yeah yeah, they would record a whole bunch sometimes more sometimes maybe three but they they would record a bunch so there was continuity with everything that they were doing however they needed to do some filler Right, so you can't have this hot shot match every right. week. So some of the stories, some of the some of the storylines, you know, on certain mm. episodes, really didn't do much. But it was okay because the show was an hour. It was actually under an hour, so you didn't mm. really get affected by it because it wasn't this long term commitment. But I do believe most people watched Takeover. I feel like New Japan has the same exact thing, right? Yeah, yeah. A lot of people only watch those big New Japan matches, and that's right. why they think this, you know, which the standard is higher over there. But mm. the the perception is that the wrestling is so much better, right? Right. Where you're, yeah, it is when you only watch a pay per view. If that's the only access that you mm-hmm. have to the product, then you're not watching these five man tags that happen every single show. Which I'm still cool with. I'm cool with too. Yeah. But I think that was NXT's detriment is now that when they went to two hours, like you said, it mm. overexposed the fact that. They're not a two-hour product. Right. And it kind of hurt the writing. And then also, they took a lot of the key guys away. Do you think going live also hurt, or should they have kept that format? No, I think going live would have been awesome. I think if they did a one-hour okay. live show every every week, it would have been a very different story. Mm-hmm. I think we would be, it would be such an easier show to watch. Which, which by the way, NXT yeah. is an easy show to watch. So, I, I mean, I really... You know, the ratings are where they would I, I expect them to be. I don't think they're doing terrible with the ratings. No. It's just, this is what it is, and it won't be more than this. We, they've they've told us this that it, this yeah. is you're not going to have them touring every week in big buildings, right? Uh, you know the other thing too that always made NXT interesting for me is, and we got a lot of crap about this by saying saying this years ago was Triple H took all the cool elements of the indies, including the wrestlers, yeah, and put them all in one showcase. Yeah, but right? now they don't want that style anymore. But that was like holy shit, this is awesome. You know, it almost seemed like those early like the 2004-2015 NXTs, it almost seemed like Triple H was getting away with doing cool shit under the WWE name. Yeah. You know, they took a lot from Ring of Honor, they took a lot from Beyond. Uh they took a lot from quite a few indie companies, you yeah. know, and they've made this like really polished uh WWE product. You had who who would have thought you would have had El Generico, Sami Zayn, versus Pac for like an awesome feud. You know, the debut of Kevin Steen, the debut of Balor, uh, you know, like Hideo Itami. Like all that stuff was super cool and people were hyped for it, right? Yeah. I think the last cool NXT moment was probably the debut of Undisputed. Undisputed was a really cool moment. Yeah. Really, really cool moment. But 
you know, when, when, but the talent, the access to the talent's not there also. Mm-hmm. You gotta, you gotta look at it that way. Yeah. All these guys that went to AEW, you know, even on the lower end, like a Joey Janela, Joey Janela was set to go to NXT. Okay. With, I mean, really? I mean, that, that's where he was gonna go. Um, uh, AEW kind of put a hamper, a, a damper in this plan of getting all these guys. Yeah. I think he should change his character to Joey Generico. Joey Generico? And just, and just do, do it? Do all Generico uh, shit. You know what? I think that'd be fantastic. <laughs> well, he's, he's, the, he's the new bad boy because he turned on Sonny Kiss. On uh, Elevation. He did turn on Sonny Kiss. Dark. He murdered Sonny yeah. Kiss. Um, I'm looking forward to that. I want to see like 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 piece of shit Janelle. Jo- Joey Janelle. Yeah. I love it. Uh, uh, go go ahead. ahead. You want to do uh, AEW? Let's do it. Um, a Dynamite last night started out with the elite Kenny Omega, Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson with Brandon Cutler and Michael Nakazawa beating Matt Seidel, Mike Seidel, and Dante friggin' Martin. People are really into Mike Seidel, huh? People are into Mike Seidel. I think more so Dante Martin, dude. Dante Martin, like, too. He, like, the shit he was doing in that match was his was his showcase. Yeah. MG Geek put it was his coming out party. Yeah, that's and what he notes. wrote. Thanks for the notes again. Thank you, MG Geek. Mr. Gons. The Gonzi. Um... We had Matt Hardy private party, uh, beating Orange Cassidy, Chuck Taylor, and Wheeler Yuta with Chris Statlander. That was a fun match. It's a big roster, man. Well, I put I put this out there last night, and people disagreed, and some people agreed with me. Put it out on Twitter. I am so cool with AEW taking a page out of New Japan and having almost everybody in a faction. What do you think about that? Uh, I I, I I'm okay with it. Mm-hmm. I'm okay. The only thing that's really weird is how many people are at ringside. Okay. When a match ha- match is happening, okay, or standing on the ramp when the match is happening, that that's the only thing that mm-hmm. really stands out to me. I'm like, maybe you could have a l- couple less people out there. Okay. It's a lot. It's very cluttered. It's very very cluttered. But do you like it that people are associated? Like, yeah, they, they have buddies well, as opposed like- to that WWE mentality of like everybody's alone unless you're the Shield, unless you're a heel or the, the heels are. Yeah, because yeah. I mean, in WWE, the, the baby faces are have no loyalty. They have no friends. Mm-hmm. John Cena, the biggest name in the company. No the biggest baby face in the world has not one friend that's going to come out and try to help him. I know. It's, isn't it? I always found that bizarre. But, well, it started with Austin. Yes. Think about it. because, But in reality, Austin had no friends in the company. So you right. could do like a gang attack on him and not mm-hmm. expect anybody to show up because he was a piece of crap to everybody. Right. He DTA. Yeah. Don't trust it. Do it. Don't trust anybody. There you go. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> go ahead. What else? Always fun. Um, you had uh, Chris Statlander beating Nyla Rose. With Vicky Guerrero at ringside, I feel bad for Orange Cassidy's ears. He got yelled at big time. Oh, big time. Um, Britt Baker promo, hometown hero. Uh, they did a really, really good job with her on that um, on that moment because, you know, she's from Pittsburgh. Yeah. They know she's going to get cheered. She cut a heelish hometown promo. Red Velvet showed up for the beatdown. Um, do you think WWE... This is what this is. This is a note from our, our producer. Yeah. Do you think WWE would have buried her by now? I don't know. Um, she's over, dude. She is. I think she would have been in developmental hell for a long time, and that that's that, and that's the thing with with them. I think she would have been. I th- listen. I, she she's super talented. So wherever she went, she would have gotten over. But it would have been more of mm-hmm. a long journey for her in WWE. Okay. You know, because you got to relearn everything. Well, they got to dye your hair purple or pink or bright. They got to they got to give you some ridiculous thing. So if they're going to do with a dentist gimmick, it's it's not going to be subtle. Yeah, it's not like a subtle thing. It's going to be very in your face. Mm -hmm. It's going to be yanking people's teeth. Very blunt. I I guarantee you she will remove the the first match. She would have had she would have removed someone's tooth. Yeah. Uh, Chris Farrell in the chat. I was at Dynamite last night. Five bucks, by the way. I was at Dynamite uh, last night. Britt Baker's pop was even louder than it sounded on TV. More than a homecoming pop. Red Velvet was getting heavy booze. Interesting. Very cool. That is pretty cool. Uh, Impact Tag Team Championship. Uh, the Good Brothers, Carl Anderson, Doc Gallows versus the Dark Order. It was Eva Luna and Stu Grayson. Fun match. Yeah. Yeah. Fun match. QT Marshall apologizes to Tony Schiavone. Mm-hmm. The apology. He tried to beat up Tony's son. Paul White made the rescue. I finally figured out what QT Marshall's character is. What is it? He's a small business owner who's, <laughs> who's, whose customers only show up when he's not there. Fantastic. <laughs> what a great what a great gimmick. Uh, how do you feel about this, man? I really you get this match. I really popped for the big show coming out and doing a what a what a chokeslam. 
big choke slam. So I guess maybe they're setting up a match, maybe a handicap match, maybe something. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, cool. I'll take that. I think he'll get a big pop in Chicago for this. Make a yeah. quick match, you know, whatever. Opener, right? Opener. No, and, no, no. Uh, second match. Or keep if, them going. Or if they do see, because I think I think AEW smart about stuff like this. So if they do another battle royal in Chicago, have yeah. that be the moment. All right, cool. Paul White comes out, choke slams QT Marshall through like eight dudes. Yeah. Uh, Chris Jarka defeated Wardlow. What did you think of the match? That was fun. It was a good match. Uh, I really thought they were gonna do uh, the Wardlow turn last night. They're, they've been teasing it for a while. Yeah. Maybe maybe that's a story for uh, All Out. Uh, great promo too from great promos throughout the show from MJF also. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's fantastic. Um, we got Rampage on Friday. We do with two big matches. I'm gonna have actually to, three big matches. Yeah, I'm gonna have to try to stay. I don't listen, guys. I go to bed at like nine. I know, me too. <laughs> me too. I know it's hard, but uh, it's following SmackDown. So uh, let's see what they do with the ratings. Debut of Rampage on Fridays on mm-hmm. TNT. Impact World Championship. The opening match. This will be yes. the opening match on the show for the Impact World Championship. Kenny Omega, the champion, versus Christian Cage, a former Impact World Heavyweight Champion. Which is kind of cool. A TNA World Heavyweight Champion. That makes me think he's going to take that belt. So he would be one of the select few that was the NWA Champion, mm-hmm. the TNA Champion, and the Impact Champion. Mm-hmm. How many people have held all three versions of the title? In, oh, in, that's uh, a good question. And I'm not talking about the one that Moose held. Right. Let's not let's not talk. You know. Oh, I don't know the stat on that. That's a good question. I'm trying to think. Would he be the first to hold all three? He's already. I think so. The Impact Hall of Fame, right? Yeah. WWE worked a deal for Flair. Yeah, Yeah. it was like a Flair for Christian. So I I could be wrong on this, but maybe he's the first one to have all three. Is that possible? If that's yeah, if that's the case, that'd be kind of cool, man. All right. Uh, I'm with Christian, man. I like. uh, I I do. I feel like the guy hasn't really lost a step and he has a very methodical way of pro wrestling. No, he's fantastic. Yeah. He's a great wrestler. You know, what's interesting though, his style is so different mm-hmm. than what he's going up against. And it's actually cool to see because he never held the impact title. Mm-hmm. No. Well, if he, if he wins it, he would be the first one to hold the impact. Right. Title. right. That's what I'm saying. So, um, People are now saying that he held the NWA version twice. I thought he held the NWA version and it switched over immediately to the TNA title. He held he held the Impact title, then he held the Impact uh, the the TNA title. I think that was AJ Styles. Again, I'm not 100 percent on my TNA stats, but I no feel no no, like, I don't think it was AJ. No, uh uh-uh. uh. I know somebody had the transitionary title in that regard. I cannot remember that man. It, it it's it's Connor might be right in this in the chat room. Someone, MG Geek will do the homework. So I, I did like Christian's promo on Don Callis calling him a, a carny shit. A carny shit, yeah, that was funny. And then Kenny's response was hysterical. <laughs> Kenny just losing his mind was really, really funny. I, I got a kick out of that. Kurt Angle, Connor Casey, man, with the facts in the chat room. Oh, Kurt Angle has held all mm-hmm. of them. There you go. Thank you. Uh, I'm I'm looking forward to that. I think they're going to have an interesting match. Uh, I a lot of people on our Twitter feed last night were disappointed, saying like, "What a bummer that it's, we're going to get Christian versus Kenny." I don't see that as a bummer. Um, I, listen, you know where it's a bummer if, if it's the replacement for hangman and you anticipate a hangman would finally defeat Kenny Omega, right? Then it's a bummer. Is it a if bummer? If that's what you wanted. But I mean, nobody like, listen, it's pro wrestling. When do you get what you want? When do fans get what they want in pro wrestling? Sometimes. Sometimes. Occasionally. Right? 25% of the time? 25% of the time. I'm going to yeah. go 18% of the time. They 18. get what they want. So listen, I... All right, whatever. Uh, you know, now maybe it's something else on the line. Now it's title for title at uh-huh. All Out. But do you want to see this match done twice now? I think this is going to be the barometer. This is going to be the litmus test for how well they work together. Maybe listen, maybe this never, isn't the All Out. Listen, maybe this isn't one. I don't know. We'll listen, see. You never know. Like especially for two guys who have never wrestled each other, you need. It's like it's like a speed date, right? Yeah. You need to get. You need that feeling out process of like, Another are we going to have chemistry? Are we going to? You know, are we going to touch each other's bodies in a cool way or what? I think part of the cool factor is that it's 2022 and they're going to touch their bodies in a cool... 2021 and they're going to touch their bodies in a cool That's way. That's how wrestling should be built from now on. You, what, that, a cool match? Oh, just... I want to touch your body in a cool way. <laughs> uh, no, I, I... Listen, save Hangman because there's going to be so much stuff mm-hmm. that overshadows. Uh, Nolan in our chat room, great point here, right? Uh, you have Daniel Bryan potentially showing up in a couple of weeks. You have CM Punk showing up next week. Uh, mm-hmm. What happens here? Does it does it just fizzle out? You know, you're no longer the key focus here, which makes a lot of sense if you're not going to put Hangman in that position right now. Punk had a uh, Punk had an interview, I think, I believe, with Saturday Night's main event, 
front of the show. Yeah. And he did say he will be in Chicago. Sunday night's main event. Sunday night's main event, sorry. Uh, he will be in Chicago for Rampage, but for a possible Heels premiere. Yes, yes. So yeah. I think the dude's kayfabe in it. You know, like you're get. This is such a weird thing because, like, is it is the news of this so big that it couldn't be contained? You know, because like, wouldn't it blow the roof off the place if it, he just showed up, not do anything, just showed up? So I can tell you that he's been. You know, this whole training thing. Everybody's uh, like, well, how does he in the ring? Uh, it's 100% accurate. He looks fantastic mm-hmm. in the ring. Uh, I guess from what I heard, I don't know how true this is. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was working out in the in the warehouse of uh, Pro Wrestling Tees. Oh, interesting. Somebody okay. said that that's where he's been working out. <laughs> so I listen, man, he's a big name. He's Regardless K-Fabe of what it. you think, you know, you like him or you don't like him. He's a tremendous name. And. Uh, this is going to be, I mean, how much of a needle mover is he after seven years? Clearly. A We're going to find yeah. out. We're going to find out. Didn't those August uh, 20th Rampage tickets go sell out already? Oh, yeah, they're done. So that's a needle yeah. mover. Right I, there. I mean, you're talking, I mean, at least 13. I don't know what the total was. Wrestle tick, uh, wrestling ticks mm-hmm. on Twitter does a fantastic job at getting the analytics of ticket sales, secondhand market, you know, first uh, ticket master sales. So he's he's tremendous with this. I I'm do, a big numbers junkie. I don't I know, know if you know that. About me. I, I do know. I get that. off really? on numbers. Yeah, really? yeah. You never told me you know that. This. You never told me that. Love numbers. Um, I think every time you talk numbers, I it's like you drug me. I fall asleep. <laughs> it's only because I can't count, so I'm overcompensating <laughs> for something. Uh, I also think the word kayfabe at this point in wrestling should be replaced with the word coy fabe. Coy fabe. Just because everybody's so coy about goddamn everything, you know. Yeah. Uh, so. but Rampage on Friday premiere episode 10 p.m. Impact World Championship Kenny versus Christian Cage. TNA Championship, Miro versus Fuego del Sol. TNT. TNT, sorry. TNT Championship, Miro versus Fuego del Sol. How uh, do you like the Redeemer character on Miro? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like it, man. Instead of like video gamer. <laughs> you no, know, no. I hated it. You know what? I have to tell you. I hated how he debuted. Uh-huh. I hated all that. Uh, I don't know what it was leading to. Uh-huh. I don't know what the plan was with that, but it was a stupid, stupid story about him. The whole wedding, the best friend gimmick, I did not like. I think this is the best mm-hmm. way from. But he doesn't have an alliance, does he? Who's in no. his crew? Nobody. No. Um, Nicholas Kreese, five bucks. Uh, this is a comment. Christian winning Friday could set up a winner take all match at All Out. Yeah, I think or that's what it is. Christian loses Friday and they take him out a la Hangman. Okay. Maybe. We'll see what happens. Um, and then you have the women's championship match uh, Britt Baker versus Red Velvet. I'm looking forward to that. I am too. I like Red Velvet. Yeah. I uh, am too. Go ahead. Uh, Dynamite next week, AEW Tag Team Championships. The Young Bucks versus Jurassic Express. You know, and I do like that they have title defenses on TV regularly, mm-hmm. uh, which WWE doesn't tend to do. And when they do, you feel like it doesn't matter. But I mean, you know that the Bucks are going to win this, but you kind of still want to see it. Uh, Young Bucks versus Jurassic Express. Sean Spears versus Sammy Guevara. And uh, who? Oh, by the way, who has a major announcement? I don't know mm-hmm. what that is. And Darby Allen and Sting. Versus 2.0 in a Texas tornado match. I'm with it. This is Sting's first match mm-hmm. on TNT since March 23rd, 26th, March 26th, 2001. 20, 20 years. years. Whew. Listen, I'm I'm so cool with Sting being at ringside. Very cool. Right? Yeah. And I'm cool with him just punching and chopping. That's like, it. Yeah, like last too. night, you know, because yeah. it still looks good. He's Sting. He doesn't have to do anything flashy. He did that suplex on the ramp. Uh, I think 2.0 are definitely dudes who seem like they're good guys and good workers yeah the canuck bucks uh some housekeeping here boys and girls matt men merch is for sale new ones obviously we have prowrestlingtees.com slash matt men podcast you can get the og shirts over there hell yeah but we got a new shop it's shop.spreedshirt.com go to spreedshirt.com slash matt men shop you get 15 percent off till the 22nd spread shirt Spreadshirt. What did I say? Spree. Spree. Spreadshirt. So sorry. <laughs> Jesus. Spreadshirt.com. Uh, Matt Men Shop. Mm-hmm. Uh, Ma- Vegas merch, obviously, is available there. You can still get it in time. And also, we are getting ready for our all-out merch coming up. We're going to have a lot of merch coming up. Uh, you guys get 15% off on the shop.spreadshirt.com slash Matt Men Shop. We're going to throw the links into all the chat rooms right now. And uh, you're going to get 15% off. We have Vegas merch available through SummerSlam. Yes. And Chicago is upon us. Chicago is upon us. 
Uh, I Friday. Can't believe that. Yeah, dude. It's a couple of weeks away. Next week we're gonna be in Vegas. We're gonna be in now, Vegas. At this time we're gonna be on a plane, heading going to Vegas. to Vegas, wearing fuzzy slippers, uh, belly shirts. Yeah, and we're flying Spirit Air. Towels on our heads. This is not gonna be a fun flight back. I'm actually trying to find us new flights back. Are you a good flyer? I'm a fantastic flyer. Yeah. 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 I love flying. Okay. Uh, we're going to have Rob Van Dam there, our special guest host at the pool Mm -hmm. with Katie Forbes. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. It's going to be a real crazy, crazy, uh, (laughs) going to be a doozy. It's going to be a doozy. I got to bring my sunblock, man. I got to bring my sunblock. I don't want to be looking like Zoe. No, we're going to be in a cabana. Very nice. We have a nice little cabana. Uh, Patreon relaunch. We're launching it SummerSlam weekend. Uh, we're going to have a whole bunch of tiers. We're going to announce it later in the week. The $1 tier tier is going to be phased out. But you're going to be grandfathered in if you're in there. We're going to have new shows, perks, access to these notes, and breaking news before anywhere else. You want to get the breaking news. You want to get what's going on. Sign up. Patreon.com slash Matman Podcast. Matman Podcast scheduled next week. Recording the show on Tuesday. Tuesday morning. Mm-hmm. We're going to do a weekend recap. Friday, we'll be doing a preview to SummerSlam and TakeOver. Also, we're going to be live from the Sapphire Pool on Friday. I'll have time and everything posted. Uh, Saturday night, there's Triple Mania. Also, guys, uh, this is going to be airing 8 p.m. East, 7 p.m. Central, 5 p.m. Pacific on YouTube, Facebook, and Canal Space in Mexico. So uh, you're going to have... I don't want to run down the card. I'm running out of time here. But, uh, you know, it's it's an interesting card. And the main story here is, does Kenny Omega drop the title to Andrade, the AAA Mega title? Well, the two two of the interesting things here are... Kenny versus Andrade for the AAA Mega Championship, yeah. right? Uh, I feel like AAA probably wants that belt on Andrade, right? Uh, Deanna Perazzo versus uh, Fabi Apache for both the AAA Reina de Reinas and Impact Knockouts title. I think uh, Deanna should win. Um, you have Lucha Brothers versus El Hijo del Vikingo and Laredo Kid and Taurus and a mystery partner for the AAA Tag Team title. Okay, cool. So that's interesting. Do you think they'll do you think they'll do more of a crossover on the show with andrade and the lucha brothers i don't know okay i i I, this is my weak point with pro wrestling the spanish stuff yeah yeah it's tough to keep track of it yeah it's it's my weakest weakest point so i leave that to the experts here yeah but i enjoy it uh let's see new japan resurgence saturday august 14th this saturday this is going to be fascinating here, mm-hmm. okay? This is where where the story lies. Uh, never open championship, Jay White, the champion, uh, versus David Finley, IWGP United States Championship, Lance Archer versus Hiroshi Tanahashi. Mm-hmm. This is an interesting setup now. Yes. So, Archer drops it to Tanahashi. Okay. They've already teased the John Moxley stuff. For sure. God, for my own selfish needs, can we have Tanahashi and Moxley in Chicago? Oh, my God. Can this become the the creme de la creme to this pay per view? Because I'd be very excited for that. I will I will do a backflip over you. I hope so. <laughs> I hope. Can you put me on your shoulders and I'll just show everybody? My, oh yeah. Can I just flash everybody like this? Yes. You're, okay. I got to work on my quads, but yeah. you're definitely. I'm putting you on my shoulders in Chicago. I'm gonna draw like bullseyes <laughs> on your nips. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, John Moxley and a mystery partner versus Doc Gallows and Carl Anderson. Uh, what else? Who else do we have here? Who do you think the mystery partner is gonna? Be? I don't know. I think it's going to be um, Shooter. You think it'll be Shooter? Yeah. Or maybe it's going to be what? It'll be um, Eddie Kingston. Eddie Kingston. That'd be fun. Yeah. I mean, that's okay. Uh, Carl Fredericks. Uh, who, who's, who's he wrestling? Oh, uh, Alex Coughlin. Yeah. Ad, okay. And then uh, Tom Lawler, uh, J.R. Kratos, uh, Joral Nielsen. Royce Isaacs and Danny Limelight versus Leo Rush, Brody King, Chris Dickinson. Big match. Fred Yehi and Yuya Yumara. Fred Yehi, we used to see him in uh, Evolve a lot. Yes. Yeah. All right. You guys ready for the Super Chat? Guys, submit your questions. You want your answers answered. Hit the Super Chat button quick. Fund us as little as whatever you want to do. A dollar, two dollars, three dollars, five dollars, ten dollars. We could do these all your dollars here. Oh, Shooter's in the UK. It was supposed to be Shooter, but he cannot leave the UK. So there you go. Stuck. <laughs> uh, beer money. FF beer money in the uh, in the Twitch chat with that. Thank you. All right, guys. Uh, we're going to do some Q&A, so keep your questions coming. Um, oh, by the way, here's yes, the sir. other problem. Uh, yes, and again, beer money uh, with this. I forgot that this was in the news. So AAA has a lawsuit and cannot air the content in, in the US. Really? Yes. And the reason for that is that Lucha Underground 
has the rights wow to anything they want to air in the US. So this is a problem. So you're going to you're going to have to find other ways to watch this. Preposterous. Isn't that first of all, in 2021, you mm-hmm. are not allowed to watch this because I have a contract with this person. It's really nuts. It's really crazy, right? It's really really crazy. Ready for questions? Let's do it. Uh, from Fuda Buddha. It's <laughs> five bucks. <laughs> Great name. Um, thinking of hopping on a plane and going to Chicago for the first dance. What are the chances CM Punk shows up? Um, a hundred percent. Right. I ninety nine. Cover your ass. Ninety nine. No, no, no. I'm. Gonna, you know what? <laughs> if he doesn't show up, I mean, this would be the biggest mess up. That this company could ever do. If CM Punk doesn't show up, something would, would you happen. eat that magazine? I'll eat the magazine live yeah. on the air. All right. Yeah. You got to eat something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll eat the magazine. It's been years. You've been making these promises about eating stuff. Uh, and I, will eat eat the ma- I will eat that. I will eat that magazine behind me. The Inside Ropes magazine of CM Punk <laughs> from June of 2021. I will eat that magazine. Uh, Tim Anger, 20 bucks. Is WWE in trouble letting so many wrestlers go? And is, a- is-, and is AEW's roster overflowing? I, th- I don't think w- WWE is in trouble. Uh, I, I don't think that's why they're letting people go. I think this is a restructuring of, listen, it, it, it's very, it could be a simple thing as looking at the PNLs and saying, why are we paying so much on talent when mm-hmm. they're not? I mean, we've discussed this whole assessment thing, right? The sports uh, assessment mm-hmm. of talent. Uh, if that, I think it's more something like that where they're looking at people and saying like, listen, we're, we're spending too much energy. Our efforts are all over the place. We need to eliminate some of the talent. Uh, reduce the talent. I mm-hmm. should say that's a better word. Reduce the talent so we could focus in on who we have that we want to push heavily. So it could be something like that. Listen, there's there's a lot of moving parts, but you have to remember this company hoarded talent for many many years. Mm-hmm. So it was time that they were going to let people go. Yeah. Uh, you want to do a few Twitter questions? Yeah. Let, let's just go whatever you want. How this is this from Brian Scott at Brian HM seven hundred one? How would you bring in all these rumored signings? Well, it depends who we're talking about. Right, like I, I think Bray would be great with the Dark Order. That's a nice organic story. Give me Daniel Bryan. Um, we're in New York. Okay. We're at Arthur Ashe. We're at Arthur Ashe. We're sitting next to each other. And maybe Holding Punk's hands. getting his ass handed to him. Okay. And you hear the final countdown. Isn't that, wasn't that his theme? I don't remember. I thought it was always Ride of the Valkyries. Like the orchestral version. No, it wasn't his ring was, of honor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Final it, was final, it was final countdown. Okay, it was final countdown. So I mean, it, that would be. Uh, uh, I, I, I would do it like that. Maybe, maybe that's the moment. I don't know. I, I think whatever you do, it's going to be mm-hmm. big. You just can't screw it up. I, I, I really haven't put in much thought for uh for his theme. Okay, uh, but he, you want him to show up at. The Arthur Ashe show. Yeah, maybe call that the final countdown. Maybe yeah. call that show the ca- final countdown. I, I, First dance, I, final countdown? Yeah, okay. right. pretty cool. Uh, this is from... Um, I can't even pronounce his name. Any big surprises to come out of SummerSlam and leading to draft maybe NXT vets to the main roster? Uh, there will be people on the main roster from NXT. Okay. Yeah. This is from uh, at MVP360. Is NXT dead? No. NXT is nowhere near dead. No, not at all. All right, let's jump to the YouTube chat. There we go. From B. Eshko, how would you guys debut all the rumored AEW uh, signings? Also, the shirts are great, but I need a Matt Men 2022 oh, swimsuit calendar. A Speedo special. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. I rock the uh, 1920s uh, singlet. The, 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 the singlet, yeah, yeah, yeah. With the vertical stripes. <laughs> like strongman style i love it <laughs> uh, listen i i think i think however they do it has to be done in a good way uh you mm. know i think with cm punk we kind of understand how he's going to show up yeah. right uh i i i'm curious about who his first opponent's going to be is darby allen that guy i don't know if it should be his first opponent because darby is a face right so i i don't know if that's it but you need you need a nice warmer for him and you really don't need to do much with the match you can have him face anybody this is punk, with right? that first match. Yeah, the first match, it doesn't matter. We they got your money. You're there. You just want to see him. You're not you're not looking forward to a world title match for him, his first debut. You're looking forward to something. And you're gonna get it. So you'll be satisfied regardless. Why waste it with a big, big match? I want punk sting. 
at some point. You want Punk and Sting? Yeah. I think that would be such a bonkers match. <laughs> it would be if they do it half cinematic, half in the ring. Yeah, I'm okay with that. Uh, yeah. Give like have tat- Punk's tattoos come to life and <laughs> some shit. Luminescence. And he does the life. mist too, so he can miss Sting and then Yeah, they all miss. St- but when the mist clears on Sting's face, it's surfer Sting. They can do cool shit. Right okay. Here. I'm into that. Uh all right, what do we got here? Um this is from Aaron Sways Sweezy. Olympic gold medalist Gable Stevens shopping around for opportunities. Lots of folks I have talked to have him going to WWE before finishing his senior season at Minnesota. What are your thoughts? Um, I would say that he should finish his final final uh, season in Minnesota. Okay. Don't, you know, I don't know if you know this about Brock. You know, that was the whole thing about Brock. If Brock had not stayed mm-hmm. because they had offered Brock a contract in 1999. Right. And okay. think about this. Instead of instead of getting it in 2000, the offer, he would have been in developmental in 99. So okay. Brock debuted 02. Right. Right. That means that he would have debuted a year before in 2001 in the midst of the invasion. Oh, wow. Think yeah. if you think about that, yeah. like how much everything changes then. Mm-hmm. And I am. I would say that if he had debuted in 2000 or 2001, mm-hmm. I don't see the trajectory going the same path. Okay. I don't, I don't see because he didn't have the developmental program in OVW set up the way that it was set up when he was there. He didn't have those great people there with him. You know, him and Shelton were a great team together. He did a lot there. I mean, they really fine tuned him. Well, here's, here's an interesting thought that I kind of want to pick a tail, piggyback on what you're saying, right? That whole group wasn't that like right time, right place. Batista, Brock, John Cena, Orton, Shelton Benjamin. Yeah, all, all fantastic guys. And then fast forward to FCW, Bray, Harper, Ambrose, Roman, Seth. Yeah. Right? Like right yeah. time, right place for like all these dudes. Very interesting how that kind of works and out. Isn't sometimes. it interesting we don't have a lot of that FCW stuff available? Yeah. I don't understand why. Because it was, it actually didn't look terrible. It was a precursor to NXT. But the matches were fantastic. Yeah, a lot yeah. of the matches were fantastic, and plus they had, uh, which I always thought was phenomenal that it never carried over. The Dean Ambrose William Regal feud. The Dean Ambrose William Regal, the Dean Ambrose and uh, Mick Foley feud. Well, which never materialized. Which never materialized. Yeah. Uh, all right, Drew from Mark H. Do you know any uh, WWE October live show locations or the rest of the year pay per view locations? They're announcing it like any week. Mm-hmm. I think they. It, I think this week they were supposed to announce some dates, but I don't know. Maybe maybe with COVID, they're maybe restructuring how they're going to do that. Okay. This next one's from Pratik. Hey Andrew. Hey. Is Paul White wrestling in AEW? Yeah, definitely. I think so. Are you Paul White? I am Paul White. I'm, oh, cool. Yeah. I always had a suspicion that you were Paul White. Yeah. It's very. Your legs. Brr. Your your torso is a lot shorter than your legs. My legs. Like, are your very legs long. are like coming out to here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. Pino Moreno, when can we expect more releases from WWE, in my opinion, before the draft? I don't know. Uh, I don't. I, and I should say, when I, when I posted that there were more releases, I didn't intend on meaning like that day. Mm. Uh, I, I would say that there will be probably more releases. I just don't know when. Maybe from before the end of the year. All right. We got a couple of more um, YouTubes, and then we're going to rapid fire the cool. Twitch question since it's our new platform. Yeah. Um, Frank Gradia, where do you see WWE's next TV contracts will be? I mean, do you think Peacock would pay close to a billion a year for all three programs, or do you think USA or Fox will rebid? Any news on Brock Lesnar? Just to throw it out there. <laughs> I have no news on Brock Lesnar mm-hmm. from last week or the week before, or, or the day, a day ago when I get asked that. Uh, I have no, no news on Brock Lesnar other than the last I heard that the creative didn't, wasn't great for okay. him. Um, what was the second part of that? Uh, will USA and Fox rebid? I, I listen. I think they're going to have to. They're going to have to figure out because does it make mm. sense to for you as Fox? Uh, does it make sense for you not to have Raw? Right. And for Peacock, it doesn't make sense at all that they don't have SmackDown. Right. Yeah. And really, we've seen that the numbers on 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 SmackDown they're not in the three and four million range. They're not 4 million viewers tuning into this to say, like, okay, you know what? The move was a good move. It brought in a, a much larger audience to the program. Yeah, the, I mean, mm-hmm. the, the ratings are way higher than they were, but they're also on a crappier night. 
You right. know, Friday nights are not a good night for wrestling. That that I mean, that's the reality of it. I, I, I and that's the big question with Rampage. Ten o'clock on a Friday night, mm-hmm. what your key demos out? They're not home. Okay, so we'll see what happens. Uh, Large twenty three. Have you guys seen Suicide Squad? Yes, I have not. You saw it? Fucking what you think? Rocks. Was it okay, great? Cool. Um, Steven Prasad. Hey guys, do you think a brand split in AEW between Rampage and Dynamite would complement the amount of talent they have? Um, not necessarily a brand split because it's a one hour show, mm-hmm. but you're going to have a lot of guys featured on there that you don't normally see on dynamite. So. And by the way, they have four shows now. Yeah. Ele- Elevation, dark dynamite and rampage mm-hmm. they have four shows to de- to, to highlight these, these characters. And they have been, you know, uh, the acclaimed. Wouldn't it be cool if this whole thing with rampage yeah. is a, way just to give hangman a almost dedicated show i mean can you imagine no i I, am page when i'm gonna seed these rumors a little bit (laughs) no i i think i think it's it's to have another show you know like the acclaimed Mm -hmm. really got over on these on these dark shows yeah you know so uh if you could develop talent like that 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 works out and then you debut them on the main on the main roster or the main show it works all right, let's see. Uh, we're going to do some Twitch questions now. This is from uh, Radio Oddity. Yeah. I find AEW's decision to give Christian Omega on Friday and it all out puzzling. Also, the crowd turning on Christian is interesting. Yeah. Do you heal him up? I have to re-listen. Okay. Because I, I was very distracted when I was watching that, mm-hmm. like, that moment, so I have to rewatch how the crowd reacted, but... Uh, I do find it puzzling that they're giving it away the week before the pay-per-view match. So some shenanigans are going to come into play. I don't know. I, I, it doesn't normally you don't mm-hmm. give that match away if it's your pay-per-view match. But it also says that match is not the story of that show. Right. You know, if that Chicago show the story is going to be CM Punk wrestling. Right. Right. Exactly. You know uh, uh, that what we're speculating here. Possibly or whatever. Yeah. Doing whatever he does. Uh, Anonymous Redneck asks, why did it appear the heel tunnel was on the right and the babyface tunnel was on the left last night i don't know interesting that is a nice observation from benazi 92 i feel like i'm spe- i'm pronouncing that wrong any more news on moxley and potentially tanahashi happening at all out? i hope so it's the dream right that's 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 i mean they were teasing it I ho- and if you're going to do it this is the mm-hmm. moment because he's in the states this is from ff beer money thanks for tuning in uh, business question: mm-hmm. When does NBC Universal Comcast make the offer to buy WWE? They pay over a billion for the TV rights. WWE market cap three point five billion. Yeah, I, I mean, it depends if they they want to spend that money and WWE wants to sell it. Mm-hmm. You know, does WWE feel like they need to sell the company? Uh, I, how does it benefit if they sell? Who benefits? Yeah, if they sell. Uh, you know, that's a big undertaking for NBC to take over. Would they just leave them alone to do what they're doing and to run it the way it is? Uh, does Vince want to give up control of his product in his lifetime? I don't know. These are all good questions. Mm -hmm. I, you know, there's a lot of rumblings of a sale, you know, this is right up their alley to, to kind of merge into NBC. Yeah. They're already, they're already in bed with them heavily. So I I think a lot of things are into play here. I don't, I don't know the answer to that. Uh, and FF Beer Money's follow up was the head of the table uh, determines who sees FCW. Do you acknowledge him? Yes, I'm so sorry. I acknowledge the head of the table. You acknowledge me. I acknowledge. What you. a weird like. Wh- what weird verbiage acknowledge for a me. wrestler? Acknowledge is a weird word. It is a weird word. Acknowledge me. It gets over though. I put the food on the table and I cook it. Acknowledge, acknowledge me. Acknowledge me. Why don't you acknowledge me? I walked the dog today. Acknowledge me. He's like an abusive husband. <laughs> I do everything around here. Acknowledge me. Acknowledge me. <laughs> Um, from Radio Oddity, when is Rebby? I'm sorry. Uh, from Luddite Eleven, will Omega lose the belts or just give them up in a story? No, no, no. He's gonna lose them. Yeah, he's gotta lose. He's I gotta th- lose them. I think the. I feel like we're gonna see a, an an aping, of the you know, the Okada story. Can you, he, you think this is gonna lead to an Okada moment where Kenny loses all the belts? And he's just like this abysmal failure, you know? And he's coming out with balloons and shit. <laughs> yeah, balloons? Uh, Radio Oddity asks, when is Rebby Hardy going to be revealed as the head of HFO? 
Would you have? That's the first part of the question. Uh, I don't. I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. Would you have Biggie beat Bobby Lashley the night of the draft or soon after? I, I think for I think for Lashley, I don't think mm-hmm. it should be like a like a total cash in. He wins the title. I think you need to like build it, and they did mm-hmm. do a good job. You know, he was teasing Paul Heyman on SmackDown. You know that he he has it and he could cash in at any time. Yeah, I think the I think his story needs to be that he's getting hot. He's on a win streak. Mm. The crowd is getting behind him. He starts teasing it a little longer. You don't need to give it away today. Maybe I mean I hope they don't do it at SummerSlam. My my personal thing. I I mean listen. I want if he wins a title, that's great. But I I don't. I think you, they need to take the time with this mm-hmm. with Biggie because you don't need to give away stuff today. You still have a couple months before Royal Rumble that you hit the reset button and things get really hot for you. Mm. What are you going to do in November? Well, you got The Rock in November. So, then what are you going to do in December? Are we going to Survivor Series? If it is in Brooklyn. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, if it is in Brooklyn. I don't, I don't know. If it is in yeah. Brooklyn. Yeah. Um, let's see what else we got here. Uh, it looks like that is it for the questions that Papa Johnzo submitted. Um, or... Copy and pasted. We didn't, we didn't talk about Max Caster being suspended. Is he suspended? It seems like uh, there, there's a story going around that he has to go to sensitivity training. I, I, I have not I have not been able to confirm any of it. I heard that they were removed. They were going to be suspended. They were going to yeah. be fired. I, I, I know nothing about it beyond that. I didn't even ask, to be honest. I didn't ask anybody about it. Yeah. Um, we got to end the show on a high note. All right, what do we have? You guys have some more questions? Guys, I'm going to take one last question from the, twi- from the Twitch stream. Make it a good one. Yeah, let's get a good question. Make it a good one, because I feel like a lot of you guys are new. And again, sorry if you were expecting Denise. We're not With Denise, Denise. I am Denise. Unless we high-five each other. With Denise. Uh, let's see. Let's do one more question. What are the Rotunda family r- rumors? That they would, they would show up together? Uh, Ice Tea and Coco are my is my question. <sighs> Yo, Coco's from another planet. Coco's man. from another planet. Did you see all the news stories? Yeah, she's awesome. They killed it. I've always loved her. Coco, they yeah. killed it. They killed it on Sunday night for us. And I've always liked Ice Tea too. He's a very interesting guy. I just wanted him to do <laughs> just like be poetry of mm-hmm. SVU lines. Mm-hmm. That's what I wanted. This looks like a murder. This looks like a murder. Yeah. Uh, how would you bring in Brian Danielson into AEW? Rich, I want to know how you bring him. How do you debut him? Oh, okay. I would have it be... I would have it be kind of like in a weird way. Okay. Where he's he he's at the announce booth. He just shows up at the announce booth? It's like, hey, we have blah, 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 blah. And then he's just sitting there. Why would you do it that subtle, way? So subtle. Like, you would do totally subtle. Totally subtle. And then like not even have people acknowledge it. Or have it be like... A big save, you know. I think the big save needs to be it. Like a big save, like Malachi Black is destroying somebody, and then he gets on the mic and says, "Like blah 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 blah, I'm the devil. I'm here to do. Some, I'm the devil. I'm here to do some devil shit." Yeah, know? yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and, then, and then Daniel Bryan shows up, and, okay. and then, but you know what the swerve is? What he's the fucking devil. Daniel Bryan, the devil. <laughs> yeah, I'd make him the devil. And then Bray shows up. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, I don't know. Like I would do it. I would do it at Arthur Ashe, but I feel like it would have to be like a save. But I feel like with the way wrestling is now, you need the moment of somebody stepping onto the stage to absorb the pop. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. You and, need you need a big thing. And since AEW doesn't have a Royal Rumble, and they have Battle Royals, I wouldn't have Danny Bryan show up in a Battle Royal. You know? Yeah. Very interesting. All right, guys, that's it for this week. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll be live next Tuesday. Regular Matt Men show next Friday. We'll be live from Las Vegas. SummerSlam party at the Sapphire Pool with Rob Van Dam. This is going to be a lot of fun the next couple of weeks, man. We have one last pertinent question okay. about that. Okay. From Slim Shady uh, 01010 in the chat room. Yeah. Would you stream you kicking Joe Pearl? Yes. I'm going to pile drive him on the concrete. <laughs> oh, my God. On the cement. I'm just, just going to pile drive him. It's getting real. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stream some shenanigans mm-hmm. of us just harassing Joe Pearl regularly. I want to follow him in Vegas. I want to see what he's up to. Like, you want to harass? Like, him? like I want to stalk him. <laughs> oh, okay. Like cam footage. Mm-hmm. 
like old school grainy 90s camp footage. grainy camp footage like him going to like a wawa take it one step further and do yeah. like night vision footage night vision <laughs> footage of his hotel room oh boy in the window <laughs> listen joe i got nothing to do with that one. <laughs> yeah 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 we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna stalk him it's gonna be fantastic all right guys that's it for this week love you guys see you next time Later. take care